Hi, this is Priyankesh. I hope you all are doing great. Welcome to the solution session of sample set, which is being provided by IG Idea. So let's get started. This video is in continuation with the part one. In this video, I'm going to cover the next 10 questions. So let's begin with the first question. So here in this question, it says y varies with respect to the sum of two components of which one varies directly with x and the other inversely with x. If y equals to 6, then x equals to 4 and if y equals to 10 by 3, then x equals to 3. So we have to find the relation between x and y. So let the relation be as it is saying first part is varying directly with x. So it is y equals to ax and the second part varying inversely with x. So it is y equals uh, y equals to ax plus b upon x okay now using conditions so first condition is y equals to 6 and x equals to 4 so this will come out to be 6 and this will come out to be 4a plus b upon 4 okay now take the lcm and solve this equation to 6 4 are 24 4 are 16 a plus b so this will be our equation 1 now using second condition so it is saying y equals to 10 by 3 and x equals to 3. So here this will come out to be 10 by 3 and here it will come out to be 3x plus b upon 3. Now take the LCM. So this will come out to be 10 equals to 9x plus b. This is our equation 2. Now let's solve these two equations. So it will come out to be 24 equals to 16a plus b and here it will come out to be 10 equals to 9. It should be 9 instead of x, it should be. Okay. So this will be 9a plus b. Okay. So now solve it. So when you solve this, so this will get cancelled out and 16 minus 9 will come out to be here, it will come out to be 7a and here it will be 14. So a is coming out to be 2. So a is coming out to be 2. Now put in equation, let's say 1, put in equation 1. So we will get 24 equals to uh, 24 minus 16 into 2 equals to B. So B is coming out to be 24 minus 32, which is your, here it is minus 8. Okay. So now put these values in this expression. So you will get 2x plus uh, and because value of b is minus 8 so it will be minus 8 upon x so option 1 is your right option now let's move to the next question this is a very good question because here uh, in order to solve this series we have to use a particular definite integral okay so first look at the series so here we have 1 plus 1 by 3 into 1 by 4 plus 1 by 5 into 1 by 4 square plus 1 by 7 into 1 by 4 q and so on. This is going on. So in this series, we are going to rewrite it as, let's say, suppose in the place of 1, we are going to rewrite as 1 upon 1 and 4 to the power 0. And here in this place, plus 1 by 3 into 4 to the power 1. So just look at the uh, these two series. Like here we have 1, then 3, then we have 5, then 7. This is one series. And look at the another series, which is 4 to the power 0, then we have 4 to the power 1, then 4 square, then 4 cube. Okay. So there are two series going on here. So let's solve these series one by one. So this is 1, then 3 plus 5 plus 7, and so on. So if we find the nth term of this series, so this will come out to be 2n plus 1, where n is moving from 0, 1, uh, 2, and so on. Okay. Similarly, if we find the and a term of the this series so this is comes out to be 4 to the power n here also n is moving from 0 1 2 and so so this series has become n is moving from 0 to infinity which has become 1 upon 2 n plus 1 and this is 4 to the power n now i'm going to multiply it and divide it by 2 so we can rewrite it as n is moving from 0 to infinity this 2 will come out of this summation and this will become 2n plus 1. And this 4 to the power n can be written as 2 to the power 2n and this plus 1. So this can be written as 2 to the power 2n plus 1. Okay. 
take this as equation one. Now I'm going to use a definite integral that is integral zero to half x to the power two n d. So this will comes out to be x to the power two n upon two n plus one, and limit will go from zero to half. Now put the limit. So this will comes out to be half to the power two n. Okay, this will be two n plus one. Okay, and this will be half to the power two n plus one upon two n plus one minus zero. So when you solve it further, this will become two n plus one, one upon two n plus one into two to the power two n plus one. Okay. Now, uh, if we go back to our previous expression, that is equation one. So here you can see that at the place of the this, we can write uh, that integral. So this will become here. We can write it like that: two summation n is moving from zero to infinity, one upon two n plus one. And here two to the power two n plus one. So here you can write it like that: two summation n is moving from zero to infinity, integral zero to half x to the power two n dx. Now transfer, now exchange, or you can switch is integral and summation sign. So this will become two integral zero to half summation n is moving from zero to infinity x to the power two n dx. Okay. Now let's solve it further. Here we have to understand the, the, this thing is that is summation n is moving from zero to infinity x to the power two n. Okay. So when you put n equals to zero, this will comes out to be x equals to x to the power zero, then x to the power two, x to the power four, and so on. So here basically an uh, geometric progression is going on with infinite terms. So the summation will come out to be one upon one minus x square because Sum of infinite term in a geometrical progression is a upon one minus r. Okay, so let's get back to our this expression. Okay, this one. So let's say this is equation two. So this is two integral zero to half at the place of this summation. We can write it one upon one minus x square dx. So this will become two integral zero to half when you uh, Split it uh, one minus x squared as one minus x plus one plus x. So this will become one minus x upon one plus x. When you add both, so two will come into numerator. So I'm going to divide it. Okay. So dx. So this two and two gets cancelled, and this when you integrate this, so the integration will come out to be log one minus x then minus sign plus log one plus x. Okay. And limit will go from zero to half. So ultimately, this will become log one plus x upon one minus x. Now limit will go from zero to half. When you put the limit, so this will become log one plus half upon one minus half, and minus log one, which is already zero. So when you solve this, so this will comes out to be log uh, three by two upon one by two. So this will become log three. So let's uh, go by choices. So here, ln three is the right option. Okay. Now let's move to the next question. In this question, it is saying that if the line y equals to mx plus five, you be the tangent to the ellipse. This ellipse. Okay. And we have to find the value of m. So in order to find the value of m, here you can see that m is nothing but the slope of uh, of this line. Okay. So we have to differentiate this. Okay. Because it is saying that it is uh, this line is the tangent. So, in order to get the slope of the tangent, we have to find the first derivative. Okay, so this will come out to be 14x plus 9 to the 18y y dash equals to zero. So y dash is coming out to be minus 14x upon 18y. So this will be seven, and this will be eight nine. So minus seven x upon nine y. Okay, and from here we can get the value of y. Uh, the value of m that is since y equals to m x plus five, so m is coming out to be y minus five upon x, and these two are slopes, so these has to be equal. So let's equate it. So I'm equating it here minus seven x upon nine y equals to y minus five upon x. So on uh, use cross multiplication, we'll get seven minus seven x square. And then here it is nine y square minus forty five y. So forty five y equals to nine y square plus seven x square. From the given 
ellipse curve, the value of 7x square plus 9y square is 63. So 45 y equals to 63. So y is coming out to be 63 upon 45. So 9, 7 is 63 and 9, 5 is 45. So y is coming out to be 7 by 5. Okay. But after finding the value of y, we have to find the value of x as well. So and the x will come out to be x square is coming out to be 63 minus 9y square upon 7. Okay. So 63 minus 9y square that is uh, 7. 7 is a 49 divided by 25 upon 7. So if you solve this, you will get 63 upon 7 and the minus 9 into 49 upon 25 into 7. 7 7 is a 49 and here is 7 9 is a 63. So this is 9 minus 9 7 is a 63 upon 25. So this will come out to be 25 into 9 that is 225 minus 63 upon 25. Okay. So this will comes out to be 162. Okay. Upon 25. So further we can solve it. So we will get x equals to plus minus under root 162 upon 25. So on solving this, we will get equals to plus minus under root 162 upon 25. So 162 is nothing but your plus minus 81 into 2 upon 25. So this will be plus minus 9 upon 5, 9 root 2 upon 5. So now we have to find the value of m that was y minus 5 upon x. So this will comes out to be 7 upon 5 minus 5 upon plus minus 9 root 2 upon 5. So this is 7 minus 25 upon plus minus 9 root 2. Okay. So here when you solve it further, you will get uh, here plus minus and this will come out to be minus 18 because of plus minus it will remain 18 okay and the hair upon in denominator it will be 9 root 2 so 9 to the 18 so this will comes out to be plus minus root 2 so let's go by choices so option 4 is the right option now let's move to the next question in this question it is saying that the common reason represented by these inequalities so what will be the shape of the reason? Basically this we have to find. So I have plotted all the inequalities. You can see that the blue one. So here the blue, inequality, this inequality, first inequality is less than. So this will be the area uh, which belongs to the particular reason. Now next inequality is also less than. So this will be the required reason. Now next it is x is greater than or equal to zero. So this will be uh, equals to uh, this reason. Okay. Then we have a y is greater than or equal to zero. So this will be this reason. So uh, you can just look at the highlighted area. So this is nothing but a quadrilateral. Okay. So this will be our right option. Now let's move to the next question. So in this question, we have to find the limit. So let's look at the limits. This is limit extending to a x sine a minus a sine x upon x minus a. If you put x equals to a, so this will become 0 by 0 form, which is indeterminate. Okay. So in a, when you when we have indeterminate form, so we use L hospital rule. Okay. So using L hospital rule, we have to differentiate the upper function and the lower function. So this will comes out to be this will comes out to be sine a minus this will be a cos x. And in denominator it will come out to be 1. Now put the limit. So this will comes out to be sine a minus a cos a. So this will be our option. So option 3 is the right answer. Now let's move to the next question. So it is saying that x equals to 6 minus 8 i where i is imaginary and we have to find the modulus of x. So modulus of x is nothing but let's say suppose we have a number let's say a plus i b. So modulus x is given by a square plus b square. So here in this case, it will come out to be under root 6 square plus minus 8 whole square. So this is 36 plus 64, which is equals to 100. 
So final value is coming out to be 10. So option two is the right option. Now let's move to the next question. Here it is saying that find out the radius of the circuit. So here you need to first understand what is the standard equation of the circuit. Okay. So that is x square plus y square plus 2gx plus 2fy plus c equals to 0. If this is the equation, so we have a radius that is equals to under root g square plus f square minus c. So here in this case, we have g equals to minus 3 and f equals to 2 and c equals to minus 3. Just compare these two equations, you will get it very easily. Now find the radius, so that is minus 3 whole square plus 2 whole square minus minus 3, so this will become plus 3. So this will comes out to be 9 plus 4 plus 3. So this is coming up to be 16. So this is 4. So option 1 is the right option. Now let's move to the next question. Here in this question, uh, x is given as a function of y and y is given as a function of t. We have to find the derivative of x with respect to t. So here I am going to put the value of y into x. So this will comes out to be 1 plus at this place minus 2 log t. Okay. And this will be our bracket to the power minus 4. Now we can differentiate this function. So dx by dt will come out to be minus 4, 1 minus 2 log t to the power minus 5. And we have to differentiate this function again. So 0 minus differentiation of log t is 1 upon t. So this is our solution. So we can multiply this minus 2 with minus 4. So this is 8 upon t. In this bracket, we are getting 1 minus 2 log t to the power minus 5. Or we can further rewrite as 8 upon t 1 minus 2 log t to the power 5. But here you can see that this is not present in the answer. So we can further rewrite it as 1 plus y to the power 5. Now look, if we go by choices, so option 3 is the right option. Now let's move to the next question. So here in this case, it is asking about the limit theta is tending to 1 and c 1 minus theta minus 1 upon 1 minus theta. You put the limit. So again, this will become 0 by 0 form, which is end up indeterminate. So apply L Hopital rule. So by applying L Hopital rule, you will get here limit theta tending to 1. You will differentiate this. So this will comes out to be c to the power 1 minus theta ln c and or you can say log c and then We'll again differentiate this so this will comes out to be minus one. now differentiate the denominator function so this will comes out to be minus one minus one and minus one gets cancelled out now put the limit this comes out to be c to the power zero log c and ultimately this will comes out to be log c so option five is the right option so now let's move to the next question in this question we are going to use the property of log which is log m plus log n which is equals to log mn, okay? Because basically uh, same here, so we can use this property very easily. So this will comes out to be log 10. This will be 4 by 17 into 16. So 17, 4 is a 68. So this comes out to be log 10, log 16 base 10. So option two is your right option. So that's all from my side. If you are preparing for IGIDA 2021 exam for MSc or PhD, so you can join our classroom program by calling on this number or uh, classroom link is given in the description and you can also connect with us on our telegram channel link is also given in the description if you like this video please subscribe it and share it with your friends thank you for watching stay safe and stay healthy